the, the honest to God, man, the one thing I see about Jalen is his like he got a di he got a different swag and calmness this year that just allows him to make the right throw. All right, we are back. We are Sports Take on this Thursday. Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, I am Rob Ellis. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Can't wait to talk to our next guest. Uh, was an Eagles linebacker special teamer, played here from 2013 to 17. Of course, also played in Jacksonville as well. And you see the helmet right there. Yes. What up, what up, what up? Yeah, good. Baby, What's up, yeah. my man? How you make it out? I'm doing good, man. How you guys doing? Down good, here, man. Good, good man. to see you. Well, yes, where sir. are you? Where are you located? Where, where, where are you? I'm where, actually where are you right at uh, Jack's Beach, man. Weather in the storm. Uh, uh, okay. To come up to the game, but I um, got sat down here. But all is well, you know. All is well. God how is how is it in your your neck of the woods? Is it is scary? Some of the stuff we've seen, or not not quite. Yeah, as yeah. I mean, I, I got family and friends, guys that I know used to play in Tampa. They got hit pretty hard, but up here it's it's all good to go, man. I was actually with Marcus Pollard and the guys uh, earlier in the week, seeing how they were doing. Mm. Everybody excited for the game, man. So they're ready to come up there and, uh, you know, play a worthy opponent. There you go. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's the big thing right there, a worthy opponent. Now, uh, earlier on when we first got the schedule, they weren't thinking they were going to be playing. The Eagles weren't thinking they were going to be playing a worthy opponent. Now these guys have came out and uh, showed pretty much that um, Doug can coach. He knows what he's talking about. And, and they're following suit, man. Man, it's it's funny to see Doug. I saw him in the preseason, and his whole entire demeanor from two, 2017, 18, won the Super Bowl to now has not changed. And no, you know, it hasn't. Okay, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, just kind of seeing him come with the team. You know, obviously Jaguars went through the ebbs and flows last year. Everybody knows the story that happened with uh, you know Urban and everything, but you know, just to kind of weather the ship to see where Doug is taking our team in 16 and then 17 when we won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel that same energy here. And the good yeah. thing about it is, you you know, he's a good coach, man. He knows what he's doing. He, he has a young quarterback and he put a lot of coaches that are quarterback offensive minds yep. around Trevor to yep. really show him that perspective of the game. And at the end of the day, he finished with everybody go eat some ice cream. So the players can, love him. Can, can, <laughs> can, can, can you let us in on – what it is about Doug that gets the best out of players, what he got out of you guys, 16, 17. I thought, and I've said this a number of times over the last couple of weeks, I thought Jacksonville would be at least a year away from being a competitive team. You look at the money they spent to bring in free agents and stuff, yeah. and everybody was laughing about them paying Christian Kirk that kind of money. Oh, my goodness. He fit right in. OK, you look at some of them, the drafts they've had in the last couple of years. What is it about Doug that's able to get these guys to not just play at a high level, but another level for him? I think it's uh, multiple reasons. But the two that really stick out is uh, one, Doug was a player. So yep. he understands, right. you know, he's he's seen what the game does to people and how it treats them. And he's a coach that wants to treat people right. When you have that feeling of, you know, being good, you know, God first and football, man, he, he wants that to be in his team. And you can immediately see that like type of energy flow right into the team. And you saw that happen in 2016 and in 2017 with our team. And then you get the, you know, the other added advantage of that, you know, Doug being a quarterback, understanding the business yeah. of the game, he has another edge on top of, uh, I think, a lot, you know, just knowing how how he needs to spin the pieces the right way. Because to Doug, I feel like he's just a, an extension of Trevor being on that sideline. Mm -hmm. He knows what pieces he needs. He knows what parts he needs, and he wants to run his offense. So he came and put the coaches around him to do so. And then they went out and got a hell of a defense, man, I'm picking mm -hmm. up with the first-round pick with, uh, you know, Walker and then definitely adding in uh, old boy from the Falcons, that linebacker. And then they had some players just step up that want to play. And when you get those key pieces around, man, you uh, you know what you're doing. Mm. Now, when you – like, Doug takes over for Chip when he was here, and it was, you know, kind of combustible situation, and he kind of smoothed the – calmed the waters. Do you see that parallel there with what was happening with Urban Meyer now and what's going on with Doug with that team? Oh, yeah, definitely, man. It's uh, it's – it's very comparable. What I definitely see and I like um, that he's doing is taking the quarterback and Trevor and making the most out of him because he is, a, you know, he's a great talent and athlete. And, um, you know, this is going to be a real test for him because the offensive line will get tested this week, you know, heavily with Fletch and my boys up there. And then, you know, he's definitely going to have to make some tight throws with the way the defense is running. And I know Kazir White, that dude is a hell of a linebacker. They've been running around. So, He's going he's gonna to definitely be thrown in the fire, man. We got to see if he, uh, you know. That's right, Kazir. Yeah, that's right. That's little right. little college ties right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. That's right. I knew, well, I, knew, I knew where you're going with that. Yep. Yeah, I know. <laughs> in fact, you guys just got Trot's son. 
We got to yeah. represent, man. We got to represent. Okay. You got your boy. You got Trot's son also. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Trot's yeah, son yeah. to sign yeah. with him. Yep. But yeah, um, he is a beast, by the way. He yeah. is a beast. But, yeah. you know, look at the stream, man. You know, I mean, it's evident. Where the hell is our special teams at? And the stream is like, all right, we need to bring Najee back, man, to jump because our special teams right now is 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 not showing up. We got two thirds of the team that's there. We need that one third of special teams, man. We're not doing it, man. Do you guys have something in special teams that's looking all right, man? That we got to worry about? I say that uh, what the special teams player that everybody know of definitely is with Christian Kirk and then Jamal Agnew. I'm telling you right now, man, it's nobody can deny the speed, you know, when you yeah. see the field. So, uh, it's enough highlights to go around where I think I don't even need to comment on that. But I think with the Eagles special teams, man, it's, it's they, they got such dynamic stars and athletes, man, that those cats can make the plays when needed. They just need to start doing them more consistently. And then with, yeah. you know, with Jacksonville and everything that they've done, um, sorry about that. They, um, you know, they really, you know, they really understand, I think, in total of the game and where the team was deficient last year, Doug knows where to add it to be efficient and then, you know, keep moving forward. Hey, Najee, uh, I, I don't have to tell you this, but uh, Jalen Hurst has become the Pied Piper of Philadelphia after just three weeks. And you being a defensive player, and obviously you had to study a lot of quarterbacks in your day. Tell me what you see most about him that jumps out at you. The the honest to God, man, the one thing I see about Jalen is his, like, he got a di- he got a different swag and calmness this year that just allows him to make the right throw. Mm-hmm. You know, he he matured into the game. You saw him kind of making fluster throws. You saw him maybe trying to fit yeah. things up last year, going to the games. Like now, he's just he back with his boy and AJ. You can just see he got a comfortableness and a, and a calmness that you know. Jalen's thing that stick out is that for one, he's strong as hell. He he just got to be able to have time to do what he needs to do, man. So um, I think that his confidence and being a quarterback and and actually making throws that a lot of people was questioning him on right now is like those are answered. So he can throw the mm-hmm. ball. We know he can run the ball now. I mean, shit, we always knew he can run the ball, but mm-hmm. um, I think that that's uh, that's it. dual threat is a term you're hearing right now in a lot of quarterback positions. Mm-hmm. They successfully doing it without getting hurt. I know when I played with Vic back in 13, you know, everybody thought of him as one player and, you know, he was the other type of player and seeing him run. Now Cats is throwing the ball as well as they're running it. Um, that's really what Jalen is. How uh, how, how dynamic is that A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith combo they have on the outside? Man, I play with him on Madden all the time, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're dynamic enough. They're dynamic enough to be one and two. Well, you know, looking at um this year, you you know the Jacksonville defense, man. They they added Lloyd, and Lloyd is taking his game to another level, man. He can run, he hits, you know, what I'm saying leaving Utah. You know, I I I thought he was the number one linebacker uh, in the draft, and we went and got the number two linebacker in the draft. But he is, man. He's playing long. He's playing efficient. You know, tell me what his traits were making him so good as his rookie year. Man, it's uh, it's funny because that dude is not that big, but when he hit, man, he looks thin. Yeah, yeah, it's a wall hitting you. And his his athleticism and speed for the game, um, right now being young and durable, like his speed is really his instincts is something that stuck out. You can see that in college, but um, it's a testament to Doug, man. He see the what the players are great at, and he just let them excel. And I I got a couple friends that's you know still on the team from playing down here. And when he first got here, they was telling me Lloyd was just running around trying to hit everything, and now he know what to hit. (laughs) (laughs) So you can definitely see he definitely know what to hit, man. Can you make that comparison? Can you make a comparison, or would you, uh, to Micah Parsons and him? I mean, is there is there a little bit of comparison to both of those guys? I would say definitely comparison to instinct. Uh, I actually think he might be faster, and then size wise, Micah Parsons is definitely you know that dude is a monster. Right. <laughs> uh, definitely seeing him play. He's a monster. But Lloyd, man, inst- instinctual wise and then athleticism, he he has a lot of traits that during the game you can see him pop out. Is that linebacking core down there the the strength of that defense? Yeah, I would say it's a it's a combination between that and the D line. And the D line is young. Like the D line that 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 Jacksonville got now is like a young D line that we had in Philly. I could see one. Wow. You got a guy on his fifth, sixth year like BG was when we brought in some new dudes or with Trent Cole and BG with Josh Allen and, and Trayvon Walker. And then the defensive interior line has really yeah. been playing a, you know, playing a behind off. It's it's not too many Fletchers and Anthony Davis is, you know, in the league right now. <laughs> I could definitely see, you know, with Jacksonville, they they are I mean, you can see them, man. They got eight, nine hurries a game. The, the Eagles, they convert them into sacks and forced fumbles, but Jacksonville, they they're progressing that way. So Hey, speaking of hurries, is this dude Josh Allen the truth? 
Man, that dude is the truth, man. When I my, his rookie year, we called him the LeBron of uh, bat, uh, football, man, because D line <laughs> wise, he he he's lean, he's built, man. He's like you know six six, a true I would say maybe six five six six, but he he so he looks so athletic. It looks like he can play linebacker, and if he loses a little bit of weight, like he can play safety. And the transition that he made from being a Pro Bowl rookie to coming back and uh, standing up and playing outside linebacker, I, I would say he's one of those you know one percent athletes that can do it all. Mm. Najee, how good's their offensive line? I mean, we, we only two sacks allowed. Is that a tribute to them, or is that Trevor Lawrence gets the ball out quickly? You know, what's going on with the, the other teams not able to get home there? Yeah, the, the the Jaguars offensive line actually has always been the strength, I think. Um, and with James Robinson, they they get vertical. Like you, you know, Jacksonville's offense, you'll see in scouted, it's not a it's not a sideways offense. You know, it's 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 mobile with Trevor. They they allow Trevor to get out and make some throws, and that's a testament to Doug again. But they get after it, man. That you know, they had that long run on that counter, you know, mm-hmm. for a touchdown last week. But you know, against teams that you would, you know, think that they might try to scheme up, they run it right at them. And uh, mm. Doug is gonna try you, so, no matter. <laughs> what. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about you know James Robinson. You know, I I, I I remember I did a game with Travis Atn. You know, when he was with Cleveland, and we, he's every bit of a four 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 three guy, speed. But uh, Robinson's taking over, man. He's the starter now. You know what made that transition happen? Man, I think, yeah, uh, that dude is just straight up. If you want to look at a word underrated, like that's mm-hmm. what, what you know, other teams missed. He's underrated, but the balance that you just mentioned with Travis Etienne, they have a true, like, you know, a smash and slash back uh, tandem backfield. Mm-hmm. And the good thing about James is that James was in the offense with Urban Meyer where he had to become that that catching receiver. So he actually progressed his game a lot his rookie year that allowed him to be a running back this year but still a lot of offense to give mismatches with Travis Etienne on the side or, you know, lining them up out of backfield running routes. So they got, they got a couple of personalities. That's why I said, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a good game against some good, good contenders. But if the Eagles D line is playing the way they play, it's going to be hard for anybody. Ooh, I, I, I was going to ask you about their core, about the secondary, <laughs> not you, the Eagles. And, it, and it's not, there are not too many teams that you can single up a Justin Jefferson or, you know, I mean, I mean, take your pick on what's been going on the last few weeks with them. Wow, what a great advantage that is where you don't have to give extra help there, right? Man, I'm telling you, like, I, yeah, that boy Slay, I seen his interview, this Slay. Like, I, like, <laughs> yeah, not, not Darius, it's just Slay, yes. Yeah, it's Slay. Like, I I, I, uh, I played for uh, Gannon when we had Matt Eberflus as our coach in Indy, as a defensive oh, coordinator. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, seeing the defenses that the Eagles run, and when, when we had, you know, the DBs that we had there, I can kind of see what he's mm-hmm. doing, and – to be able to have a talent like that, playing in Jacksonville with Jalen Ramsey, it was the craziest coverage I've seen because our defensive line used to um, used to actually – I mean, our defensive coordinator used to actually come over and say, like, look, let's leave Jalen on the island. Like, they can do those things with the Eagles defense. That allows you to do so many more creative things. And um, I think, you know, Slay proved that. He proved that you can do that to him. You can leave him out there. And uh, with the defensive line, you, know, you, only, you only got to cover for – Three seconds, three and a half seconds. So. Right. It's funny you said that because I had seen I hadn't seen that until they played against Jefferson and mm-hmm. they manned up Jefferson at times. And I hadn't seen that not in the Eagles defense in years and years and years, you know. So having that, you know, compliment of guy, and then you have trust in Bradbury and and Maddox, it really oh, yeah. opens it up, man. Yeah, yeah. And they from what we had the Super Bowl year, we had we had a big defense, man. Malcolm playing linebacker, playing yep. safety. Yep. You know, we had we had cats that like Chris Long, you know, all of the mo- multiple, you know, guys that we had, the size of the defense that we had, you know, it was just a lot bigger now. You see that the Eagles have you got Kazir White play safety, play linebacker. You know, Hassan is doing a, b- a bunch of everything. So like you can really see where they have the talent that and the, and, the, and spe- speed and agility. They're they're capitalizing on that. And Gannon, I mean, he don't blitz that much. I don't think he blitzes really too much at all. No, not at all. Yeah. Because yeah. you trust the guys up front. Exactly. So you, you got those guys. I mean, you, you give time to cover and roll some of those coverages up over receivers like that. Hey, take take me back for a moment to that 17 season. Um, when you look at the moves Howie made to make that team a stronger team, uh, bringing in some of the people he brought in, LeGarrette Blunt and, and, and Alshon and guys like this, you guys knew you were going to be a good team. But then you go through the, the journey and you're losing not just players, but – future Hall of Famers, future Pro Bowlers. Um, when you sat back and in, 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 in just soaked in that moment at the conclusion, were a lot of you guys surprised that 
you were able to do what you did, consider what you had to go through to get there? I mean, yeah, it was that that season. It was a will and an energy around the town, man. Like, thankful to the alumni, to the fans. That was something different. But even being there, like just being in Minnesota, watching the lights change colors, it was – I'm not going to lie, it was a bit of a shock. I would say the Super Bowl is the best game ever put on in sports by the NFL. They can definitely take that one. Because <laughs> <Correct. Yeah. laughs> it was a stage, man. As cold as it was in Minnesota when we got into that Woo! stage. Man, it, it was a unbelievable, it was, man. It was unbelievable. And to relive the moment that we went through through the past and like playing the Patriots, see, you know, going back, watching the highlights from 03, 04 mm-hmm. and all of that, man. And just kind of like, you know, walking through that time, that time lapse. It was I would say, yeah, it, it's hard to believe, man. You got a great reminder and, and the hardware that we got. But um, I, I, I what I will say that to the future is I can see it happening again very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, well, let me, I, cause I ask the players this all the time. I know how people felt that the day of the Super Bowl in Philadelphia, there was a weird sense of belief. Like we're usually waiting for the worst thing to happen in Philadelphia. We, we, we've been trained that way. Right. Um, was there, was there like an overriding confidence, a sense that, you know, we got this today, even though it was the evil empire you guys were going against. Yeah. I mean, we, we lost a lot of big time players that year. A lot yeah. of people don't really know because of what Foles did, man. I mean, like, you know, Sproles went out with injury. Jordan Hicks went out with injury. Oh. JP got hurt. I mean, yeah. like we lost a lot of things in that, on that team during the season, but kept winning the way we did. And when guys like Mac Holland stepped up and, you know, we had all of the, you know, LeGarrette ran how he ran the entire season and Alshon had the year he had. I mean, it was, it was so much good that just overpowered, I think, you know, when fans got to the game, they were like, look, you know, the Eagles fans going to be the, the way the Eagles fans mm-hmm. are regardless. <laughs> so it was just like now since we've won through all of this turmoil, I think I remember when we played Denver, we we, we like you – know, Killed them. Yeah, we killed them. And and it was like one of those games where we were kind of going through all of those injuries of transitions and everything that was happening. And to see how much energy that was, 1 o'clock game, nobody even thought anything of it. We came back, watched the film, came back, and Jalen Mills had like a pick six against the 49ers and like – it was just so many things that was happening outside that the will to win in the town, you know, cats being around, you know, Bear was there, B Dog yep. was off there. You know, it, <laughs> it, it was like, nah, y'all. It was almost like to for, for us, for them, it was like, y'all can't lose. Like, y'all can't lose. We, exactly. And we were like, hey, 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 wait, you gotta make yeah. this happen, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, yeah. Most of you guys had no history of the Philadelphia frustration, you know, coming from different parts of the country. Um, you knew you had a rabbit fan base, you knew you had a loyal fan base. But once you won it, did you guys fully, a lot of you guys fully understand what this meant to this city? Now, I'm not even from here. I'm from the Midwest, but I've been here a long time. Could you fully grasp what this meant to this fan base and to a lot of people's families who members were no longer here and what it meant to, the, to just the legacy of the fan base in this city? Yeah, man, I like I just from what I went through there, I definitely did. But to see the younger guys get the glimpse of it really eye opening. It was like we was winning through the season and then yeah. we ended up winning the Super Bowl. And when we came back, I remember I seen um um Pumphrey and then um Jordan Hicks and like some of the you know some of the other guys that I just got there not too long ago. Yeah. The float was a whole experience. We had fans throwing it. Kelsey was standing there acting a fool. That was insane. And then when we came back, I think it was about probably like 20 or 30 fans that just started giving gifts to players to let them know that, like, you know, throughout the history of their lifetime, what's happened, you know, with the Eagles. And cats can't believe it. Like, they still can't believe it to this day. And, like, you know, I see my I saw my dad come back and everything else like that. And, like, they – I think that what happened is, man, it was definitely a different energy that uplifted the city after all of that yeah, happened, yeah. no doubt. Definitely and, changed, yep. Oh, man, it definitely changed. And it's like – um the guys that were there before that happened, they they knew. Yeah. Like, I, I'll never forget, man, when Nick Foles used to live next to the facility back in 2013, and I saw a fan showing up at his house the year he threw like 30 touchdowns and two picks. And I'm like, bro, this is why you got to move? <laughs> <laughs> That's like, crazy. We were treating each other. <laughs> yeah. Nobody at my house. Man. Guys, you, can, can yeah. you walk me through something real quick? Because we talked about this earlier. Kelsey – you know, goes crazy with the speech, but he's got the mummer's costume, the whole thing. When you guys are getting ready to load onto the, 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 you know, the, the whatever the floats um, and you're seeing, I don't know if you saw this, are you watching him put this thing on? Like, what is this guy going to do today? Like, Man, how, it was, yeah. That entire year, Kelsey was coming up with clown costumes. You look like <laughs> McDonald's. Yeah. When he did that, just to know that he was going to do that, it was kind of like that, you know, 
let it all go moment. It was just like, <laughs> you can forget about it. I, I, we we didn't know what he was doing, to be honest. I mean, we thought it was something from like down here in Tampa, Gasparilla and all of that. But he, <laughs> he came with that energy and we knew something was going to happen. And then next thing you know, you saw Doug catch the first butt light. And then that's when it was just like, keg clogger. <laughs> <laughs> you say he, Doug caught the first butt light? Yeah, yeah Doug, Doug can throw down. Yeah, Doug can throw down. Hey, do you do you miss being that gladiator? Or are you Are you basically content with what you're doing now and who you are in life now? Man, I'm 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 in love with what I do right now. Okay. In terms of being connected and helping to elevate the players, man. I, I ain't gonna lie, the energy in Philly, the town, everything that it was. Like even the following year, I went to Indy and we went back to the second round of the playoffs. It was great, but the feeling that we had, man, and just you know being connected to that city is, it's nothing like it. It's, well, it's tell me, big. yeah. Mm. Tell me a little bit about you know what you have going on, v, you know VP. It's 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 that's, that's unbelievable, especially with what's going on in college football and 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 you know the naming rights and all that stuff, you know, kind of explain to us what you got going on, man. I really want you to let people know. Yeah. So um, I have a technology company that I started with my buddies, man. And um, we came in and met up with the Eagles actually while I was there and found it useful and, and what it does. And essentially all our technology does is uh, make mobile apps and content and mobile apps interactive. So when you're watching a highlight, you're watching a film, you're watching, you know, any type of video, you can actually click and buy exactly what you you know, looking at, or if you're looking mm -hmm. at photos. And um, right now we're going through an upgrade with the league. And what it allowed us to do is actually monetize players' name, image, and likeness. And for the players, we got this slogan. It's called Own Your Own. You know, um, they get a, they get a copy of what their data actually does and, and how that actually affects their public image, the increase in traffic and business that they do. And we were able to educate players on that in college. So when you see your name or your picture going out in the public, you have to actually – cut the proper deal, educate the players on, you know, how they're making money and what they should do with, you know, in terms of putting themselves out there and, um, you know, help, hopefully what we plan to do and what our everlasting goal is to actually, you know, monetize the futures of every athlete so that they can continue to capitalize on their name. And what do you think about, what are you thinking about college athletes now being able to monetize themselves now? Man, I think it's a beautiful thing, but at the same time, it is a, it is a, you know, it's a slippery slope of it has a lot of avenues. It's mm -hmm. definitely a beautiful thing that it needs it needed to happen. But what it also has to do, and we told this to West Virginia when they named us the uh, NIO overseers, is that, you know, for the student athletes, man, they got to grow up faster. I feel bad for them in a way where they actually, you know, when I was in college, I'm telling you right now, there's just some things that we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no, please do talk about that. <laughs> I was saying, we was uh, West Virginia, we, we wanted the number one party school for no reason. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, um, the, the aspect of what the students have to, you know, present themselves, they might have something that even if they do something that's positive, you know, yeah. When they're 18, 19 years old, when they turn 30, 30, 31 years old, they got to understand that that guy that's been there for nine years while they was playing in the NFL or doing something else has been doing the exact same thing that you've been doing. So that, mm -hmm. you know, they are going to be an expert or, or they're going to be experienced in what they're doing. So when you put that photo or that image or that picture out there, you got to make sure that it's presented in the best light that in the future that you can either A, continue to build on it or B, just be like, I didn't know what I was doing. I want to redo it. And the mm -hmm. problem, I would say, if you recall anything, a problem with social media is that it just doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So cats make mistakes. They do things. We tell them that. I mean, it's the fact that it just doesn't go away. You know, that 10 year time lapse period of like, you know, we'll come up in an interview. What were you doing or what were you thinking? And how, how can I trust you to move forward? You know, if you got a new job interview. But what it also does on the flip side is that when you do that post and you actually make that content to boost that brand, why aren't you able as an athlete to come back to that brand and say, look, I need a job because I actually helped your brand, you know, grow positively and affect as many lives and make this much money. So there's a, there's a great way to build an athlete to where they have sustainable, you know, monetization of their name, image and likeness in the right way that, you know, it's not really, you know, for every company, it's not really what the true goal is of NIL. Sometimes it's, you know, other things, but just from being a player and being around a game and seeing that it works at a professional level, like, Pros get paid all the money. The teams make big bucks. Um, the conversations that they're not having around college sports right now, they're probably pretty soon have is what, what it looks like for the TV deals because you just saw a new deal being negotiated yep. with the 10. You just, it's going to happen with other conferences. And 
players should be compensated for that, just point blank period. How that looks in what form or fashion, that's going to be an even much larger conversation. But um, mm. that's, that's what, you know, our technology does in, in, a, in a nutshell of how to basically organize that for the player so that they can actually have a fight and an understanding chance of what they're doing. Well, Najee, on that note, and you you played it at, you know, a big time college football program, but ha- what happens to like the sort of mid range, the the lower D ones, like how how do they get just kind of swallowed up by this? In, in, in terms yeah. Of, yeah, yeah, that's like the biggest thing. I mean, that, um, I've seen that's been not only eye opening, but um, what you know it's not talked about because you everybody knows you know the the CJ Shrouds and they know all of the big tank big yeah. players that don't get paid. I mean that's the deals that you expect to see the wow factor of it. But the levels that aren't talked about, the guys that make up the team, you know, the 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 zero to you know ninety nine, not the you know not the the hundred player that you know is gonna get everything. So you know the um we we've had some creative conversations around that players getting the base salary and being able to play, but those players need to be compensated as well because everybody has a fan in their hometown that no matter what, even that my father, you know, he played, he got fans in his hometown, you know, he, that know who he is. And in the case now of digital media, there's more opportunities for, you know, college athletes to capitalize on that. They got TikTok, Instagram, mm-hmm. Twitter, all of that, you know, some stuff that even is priced out for my age and I'm just as young as a lot of these cats. Right, right. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's opportunities everywhere. And um, mm-hmm. what we think is that a viable solution, like you don't want the problem of your quarterback at a, at Michigan or Texas to be making all this money and his offensive line ain't making anything. And they start getting right. maybe angry. or yeah. 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 like It's a crazy thing that can happen. Wow. And what I think NIL actually does if done the right way is it'll force kids to stay in school to get the right education experience along with the financial you know advantages that they'll be able to recoup. And they should be able to, you know, make the university stronger, make themselves stronger. So when they go on to the professional level, you might see more cats negotiating their own contracts because they're doing it in NIL. You mm-hmm. might see, like, you know, the game evolving in a financial way that is more beneficial to everybody if it is done the right way. Mm. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's awesome, man. I really appreciate it, man. Thanks for uh, yeah. you know, copping on with us, man. You yeah, man. Good to see you. Guys, you think about this, man. You think about being on air, man. You <laughs> think about it, you know? <laughs> Thank you. I am. Just trying to help whoever, man. And um, hey, bro, we would love to work with you, Barry. When we come up there, man, you know the alumni cats, the Philly Definitely. fans, and the Philly, the, the Philly alumni, they still talk the most mess. So I, I got <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Hey, Najee, who wins on Sunday, man? Jags uh, or Birds? Man, you put me in that. Position. I'm gonna put you in a tough spot. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I told you I wasn't gonna do it, man. Let me see yeah, how man. political you can be, Najee. Yeah, 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 right, right. I think both teams will play a tough game. No, right. yeah, <laughs> no, I, 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 I definitely think both teams will play a good game. But yeah, from what the Eagles are doing, I'm gonna just flat out say it, man. You know, they, they, they hit, they fire right now on all cylinders. And not to say that the Jaguars aren't; they're mm-hmm. just a younger team. So, if it, anything, I will say this: you can expect some up Doug's hand and pocket. And it, it, it'll be something spectacular. But the Eagles, with the D line that they got, man, and the way Jalen is playing, I mean, I'm telling you, right, that's why I play with on Madden. So I gotta, I gotta pick. Gotcha. Gotcha. You, re- you, re- you realize that answer gonna get you barred from Doug's practice facility, bro. <laughs> I know. I know, I know, I know like, Doug, like, man, what the? This is just between us. This is yeah. just between us. Yeah. So now, a real quick, man, just give man. a shout out to your company uh, out the door, so people know uh, what it is. Oh, yeah, man. It's uh, VPO. Uh, VPO Technology. We um, make things interactive. Look out for us. we got some pretty big announcements coming up, working with the NFL and working more with college athletes. So um, Awesome, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah, continued success. We appreciate yeah, it, Najee. Thank Thanks, you, bro. Great job, man. All right. Take care. That's Najee. Good. Yeah, he was he was fascinating. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Really interesting guy to talk to, man. Yeah, I told Good you guys, he, he had, he, he's the type that, you know, he has a lot to say, and people don't know that he has a lot to say until you sit down and have a conversation with him. Yep. You'll see how bright that kid is, man. Yeah. He, he, yes. you know, no, not necessarily a kid, you know. That, no, that he's a smart is, guy, man. Smart guy. Definitely a yep. smart guy, bro. No question. All right, let's take a time out. We'll come back. We'll uh, we'll pick up some more of the football. We'll hit some open talk stuff and uh, some birthdays and some movies and all that good stuff as we close things out. Don't go anywhere. Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis, Sports Day, Jacob Sports YouTube Network.